Welcome back, everybody. This is episode four of Do You Even Star Made, the podcast. Today, I'm with Sabre, Phantom, and Prime, and we're going to be going over a couple of topics today. So, uh, just going to introduce those. So, the first one will be NPCs. Second will be AI factions, or specifically more of them. Third will be internal ship systems. And uh, the regular feature, the work in progress corner, where we invite the speakers to speak on the previous ship they've been working on, slash station or planet. And then lastly, a uh, quick discussion on voxel games and the comparison to StarMade, so other, other games. So, um, the first section will be NPCs. So we've got more uses, creature generation spawn, deal damage on contact or clip, like explosion or stick with area of effect or damage over time, uh, astrotech pistol to heal other players, and droids or pets as an AI NPC friendly. Maybe you can build them. So those are the things that were submitted for this. So uh, Saber, what do you got to say about NPCs? Uh, one of the things that I'd really like to see as the uh, NPCs progress, um, since we've already got the, the crew set up, would be to get a little more of a command structure with the crew. Um, that way you could literally have a, uh, a really intuitive kind of system with them, so that way you can you know, hop out of your ship core or cockpit or wherever you happen to be controlling from at the time, and then like maybe highlight a certain block and then um, command a, uh, a crew member to go over and use it. So like that could be um, like a turret or even just getting in the gravity of a ship. I mean, there's kind of a way to, to make that work now, but I'd like to see it where they actually like move over to it and then activate it. And so they, you actually have, you know, crew members moving around your ship at a time. Mm. And uh, if I remember right, we're going to have, what, Lua coding? Something like that for them? I think so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we'd eventually be able to set up a little more intuitive stuff with that. But uh, just something to really give you a, a dynamic feeling to your to your crew. And that, uh, so you, your ship can feel more alive, if you will, like the, the crew and the interior of that. So it's not just one person, you know, going around the galaxy by themselves. It can be... A hustling, bustling environment. Yeah. It would also be pretty sweet, since you just mentioned it, would, would be to do droids or maybe uh, some pets as the, the animals progress, because I know he's doing that to be um, kind of procedural, right? Like where it's yeah. just different parts for each one. That's right. Okay, yeah, that'd be pretty sweet, because you'd be able to have that along with you for the ride as well. Awesome. Uh, Phantom, any ideas on NPCs? Um. Yeah, as far as pets goes, I don't want to go too close to how they did the horses in Minecraft. Yeah. But you could have it so that some of the pets you can ride as if it was a core, but only on like planets or stuff. Because have enough for us to move on planets and get up hills, but not enough to go into space unless it falls off the edge. But with the new planets, you wouldn't have to worry about that anyway. So it'd just be interesting to see flocks of NPCs just around doing stuff, eating, grazing, yeah, hunting each other. Exactly, something. just spawning. I mean, I would say even if they're unable to move at this point, but they if you prod them, they might skitter about a bit. Exactly. I bet yeah, even if it was David. stupid AI, it would still be awesome. And as long as they're in the game, you'd get David Attenborough interested. <laughs> and then... Or just turrets, yeah instead of having all of them always act as if they were a core and just being able to pivot on the dine, mm. it'd be nice to have some sort of benefit to keeping your turrets compact as opposed to just huge and then mm. still be able to turn as if it was nothing. So right. it'd be nice to have a more of a strategy behind what turrets you use. But other than that, I think Prime? it's all good. What do you think? Anything? Um, the only thing I can really think of about NPCs is uh, enemy NPCs. So, for instance, uh, enemy pirates come and attack you. Yeah, okay, you destroy their ship, or well, the core. But then, having to infiltrate the ship yourself to kill the NPCs that are on the ship, the enemy NPCs, yeah. so then that way you can actually salvage it, I think that'll make it a little bit more interesting. Because mm. then, you're doing more than just oh, blowing the core up. I'll salvage it now. You've got to go a little bit more in depth with it. You know, you've actually got to board the ship, kill the crew, and then you can salvage it. And, you know, it's just one thing I've thought of while we was going through this. Mm. 
I'm also eager to see uh, an ability to heal players, so obviously even if it's just the standard Astro Tech that uh, shoots out of a wall, that still works with logic, so that wouldn't be a problem. Um, well, I guess we'll move on to the uh, next subject, which is the more AI factions. So basically uh, that would be um, a lure conversation to allow ally, maybe pay a lot of money and you can uh, bribe the pirates. Uh, then obviously folders, which have already been confirmed in Q&A for more NPC factions, so you can customize the ships and possibly even the stations that they have. And then uh, comets, which is just an idea for an NPC faction of comets, which I guess you could do through this system, to be honest, looking at it. Um, so has anyone got any ideas on uh, or you know about this AI factions expansion? Saber? I think something that... Uh could be added well i mean obviously you know more factions will be added i presume but it'd be really cool to have um more of a a way to interact with them like uh, the one that pops into my head immediately is like a deep space exploration one so like maybe you wouldn't see them hardly ever but every once in a while you'd come across this like great huge like research station or something like that and it's this really like reserved um race or whatever um where they kind of keep to themselves they don't really like outsiders that much but maybe you could either bribe them or find some way to kind of get in their graces yeah and then they can you know give you access to better technology or maybe even just cheaper technology stuff like that better prices um, so, <laughs> yeah just to, just to kind of give the the universe more more depth as far as just who you're interacting with rather mm. than just trading guild who you basically ignore at this point and then pirates who you only fight yeah yeah uh phantom um really i'd say instead of having them as their own separate factions just have them as sub factions so that they are basically treated as a fleet within your faction or whatever faction they're set to so that they can go around doing AI stuff or just so that if you have a big fleet like we do with the Imperium each of the squadrons we have can be its own sort of AI faction but yes more player control so maybe the ability to actually AI. join the AI factions that are created yeah. fully be yeah. a part of the faction because uh... yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I imagine a lot of people would like to try and be pirates yeah. and then you could set it up in the pirates so that instead of it just having a mess of all the different pirates it can take spawn at once you can have it more controlled of what would spawn Yeah. so that different faction or sub-faction of that faction would be the different tiers as opposed to just everything at once it would yeah. just be that one tier so in fact what you're saying is in addition to having these faction folders it needs to have some way of indicating the scaling for the blueprints. Yeah. That's interesting. That's I never think, come up before Yeah, actually. I think that could work because like if you had a faction that was, well let's say it's this sub-faction where it's just pirate fighters yeah. and maybe you take out all the pirate fighters then um, maybe a little bit later It'll uh, one of the higher up higher faction. Level yeah, 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 exactly. It'd be a, a larger, more you know, combat-ready ship. Almost like the uh, wanted level system in GTA. Exactly, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. like that. I mean, I think we do have a form of that already, but not with, the, you know, you would probably want a bit more control when it comes to being put in our hands. Um, Prime, do you have anything to say about the more AI factions um, expansion? Um... Not really, no. I mean, the only thing I can really say about it is obviously the custom, the customization of their ships, you know, the use in the different times, but saying that in the, in the last section. But other than that, no, I can't really say anything else. Okay. Well, in the interest of keeping the time down, we'll move straight on to the next section, which is internal ship systems. Um, the two suggestions we've got are the player astrotech, which heals, and a teleport beam of some kind. And this isn't really a question about how to do it, just a question of what kind of things can we add to the player interaction in their own ship when they're in astronaut mode, as opposed to flying the ship. Um, oh, I'm trying to think back. There was a uh, an idea I had months ago i think to give to give people reasons to move about their ship mm. like to actually have an engineering room or an engine room um or like a weapons room um and i think i think i boiled it down to like overheating per se like not necessarily that it would be um like just a weapon overheating and then cooling down but like you could actually manage and then uh alter your systems a little bit so like let's say for an engine room 
um, the captain, like almost think like Star Trek, but not quite. But like, you know, you're you're calling for more power or whatever. So then somebody could toggle something in in that engine room, like from a command panel there or something, so that you would get kind of an overdrive system. But it would only last for maybe 30 seconds or a minute before like you started overheating engines. So that way, like they would become um, they wouldn't work anymore, like either for a limited time or uh, you know for permanently. I don't know. Um, but you know, just to give uh, more internal systems so that you can actually move about your ship. Uh, mm. You could use it for role play, I guess, kind of. But like, just to actually like make cruise ships viable. So like having a optional. button. So like, say there's say when you're on cooldown, you could have a button that's got to be placed far away, and if you go up to it and hit it, it'll <laughs> deactivate the cooldown. <laughs> but you can only do it by going there and hitting the button. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that, I know that's that something stupid, but you know. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, you know, with capital ships, you know, a, a one-man crew shouldn't really be able to do it all. No, you should have a guy in your engine room. You should have a guy on your weapons, a guy flying it, maybe even a guy looking. <laughs> you know, because yeah, uh, that's cool. Okay, so uh, Phantom, anything about the uh, internal ship systems? Um, yeah, for the teleport beam, I'd say instead of having a beam, have it so it's two blocks. So you've got input output that link together. And it works like the gravity, except it just all works like the teleport command. And you hop on one, activate it like a gravity block, and then it kind of activates a localized teleport. That sounds like it would uh, be internal. Thing. It's a change, or it's teleport or something. It's not. It's not TP. It's not change sector. Yeah, like it, it's, it's the other one. There is another. No, no, there is another one. Yeah. Yeah. But like. You know, can you think of any other things that would be useful in a ship? I mean, someone else at a refinery. So you could mm. hook up your salvages to storage and the storage to the refinery. And then if you use that array of salvages, it would put it into the refinery and maybe refine it into something. You know? Yeah. I mean, an idea that we could have is a... Um, a like a replicator system, so like the factory system that we have on planets and stations, but a smaller version so that it can't do so much. So say for instance, um, at the moment with weapons and like your helmet, like if you die and you have it set so that you lose blocks, you lose them. So like a system where you can gather resources to recreate it, but have that on your ship, I think that would be um, a good system to have on it. On, on any ship, really. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Uh, another idea I had, but just now actually. Um, I know everybody kind of wants a life support system, or at least as far as I know, everybody wants mm. a life support system. Yeah. Um, but it's it's obviously going to be, well, okay, it's probably going to be too um, computer intensive to try and like calculate the volume of your ship. And exactly. Stuff like that. Yeah. But I'm wondering if maybe uh, I'm not entirely sure how gravity works, but like, I don't know if it's a a volumetric thing like just a shape around your ship or if it's just a distance from it but I think you could either add a block that could do it or maybe he could do it automatically I don't know whenever you get within a certain range of a ship it's just like a rough cube or something around it I mean it wouldn't be the most accurate yeah we thing, have docking like, areas already don't we so you could say have a module with enhancers that draws an area which is cube somewhere in the ship you know yeah, it wouldn't go red like, when like it clips event, through basically. things do you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? That the difference is it wouldn't go red when it clips through walls because you'd actually make it the size of your ship, you know, or the size of the area or the corridor that you want to be uh, atmosphere. And then as long yeah. as your ship has power and you're in that box, you've got atmosphere. And so obviously yeah. it would be your duty as a builder to design the airlocks so that the atmosphere ends at the airlock. If you wanted, you could probably build the area outside the ship a little bit, but that would be a design mm -hmm. choice. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah we could have like Cause then you have an oxygen not... generator, but then yeah, like and then it's just because then, then it's just a case of checking if the player is inside this area or not, and it doesn't need to worry about collisions and things like that because it's literally just checking if a player is in a docking area but it'd be interesting yeah. to know if, if if he if that's you know it might not be something that's actually but that's an interesting way of doing it i think um i think an idea like that was thrown around at some point or I mean, uh, mm -hmm. another idea i've had there was going from um the the engine systems mm. where like you could boost it i know uh, for shields so say for instance you're being attacked from the front you can increase the shield strength 
to the front so you can yeah, take it away from uh, as far as I know. So you could yeah. hit a computer and go full, you know, harden the shields yeah. to the front yeah. and then... Yeah. But you'd have to yeah, do it cows. from astronaut mode or I guess structure yeah. tab if it was a small ship. Yeah. Yeah, Cal had an idea for something like that. And did, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure they're implementing it, but I'm not positive. I think it was something like that, yeah. Right then, so let's move on to the next section, which is the work in progress corner. So Saber, what was the last thing you were working on? Uh, actually, I just started my first new, uh, I guess, nearly capital-sized ship. Uh, it's called the Lionheart. It's going to be kind of a uh, multi-purpose vessel. Um, it's like 550 meters long, which is the longest that I've ever made. Uh, and it's it's been a blast because it's going to be like really, really combat heavy because it's got four giant cannons on the front, and then it's going to have uh, two like missile cannons on each side. And then it's it's just going to be a massive build. I'm I'm really happy with how it's turned out. I did a video on the beginning of it, um, but I need to go ahead and do a second video here pretty soon. But yeah, I'm I'm really happy with how it's turned out. Nice, uh, Phantom. What's the last thing you've been working on? Um, well, in a game based Star Med, where you explore the stars and build amazing spaceships, I built a building. What did Yay. you build? <laughs> it's a 17 story high building designed for some sort of PvP scenario where you'd have one team defending some sort of vault nice. and the other team having a sort of SAS esque raid on it trying to get to the contraband or whatever's in it. Nice. And then nice. That sounds and amazing. And at the mm -hmm. top, it's got a giant eye of Sauron because it fit. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's what that picture was about. I saw it fell off. The eye. It was a white hole hallucination. Uh, <laughs> it's still there. I've seen Excellent. It. It's cool. <laughs> so then, uh, Prime, what was the last thing you worked on? Uh, the last thing and why I'm still working on currently is the London prison ship for the Imperium. Yep. Um, basically, it's basically to hold people who are holding uh, contraband um, or done things, you know, against server rules and whatnot. Um, currently, it's at 401 meters in length. It's 165 meters high, 319 meters wide. Its current capacity is 64 cells. So, with the last server, it could hold everybody on the server, including all the admins. Which, you know, but now that we've upgraded, you know, it's uh, better. Um, it's nearly finished. Uh, just currently working on the skit, the out out hole. Like yep. smoothing it, giving it some more definition, more detail and stuff. Uh, it's it's impressive. All yeah, right, well, one of my well like I say, if you want to see any pictures of that to help with your visual reference, because obviously this one is going up on SoundCloud, um, you can go and check out the uh, images in the community, which should be posted up by Prime. So, um, mushroomfleet.co.uk, as always. Okay, so um, I think that would be the end of the work in progress section so now we get to move on to the last section which is voxel games in general and drawing comparisons with star made so i just want to say that most of them are stupid so like where's the rainbows okay um i love all these games they all have their own place like the, the where nobody is anti any particular game at the end of the day, it's like Mario and Sonic. They were both 2D games, okay? Um, and they're both platformers, both side-scrolling, both use sprites with animation. You could argue that they are similar, but it's like Galacticraft versus Kerbal, which is the logical extreme, because they're both space games. You can go explore space. <laughs> You know, but they're not the same, are they? You know, it's it's not really very fair to take one game and another game and compare them sometimes because they're actually trying to do different things. At Mushroom Fleet, we love all games. It's an open gaming community. Um, for example, in the lineup last night, Metal Rain produced an outstanding ship in our Star Made lineup called the Olympus. You can look that one up if you get the chance. He originally came onto our Star Made community before. Um, before Space Engineers was, was available to play 
and uh, he converted one of his original ships into that game and it looked really impressive in there and the, I remember linking it to the developers and they loved that, they loved that ship, they thought it was great. So um, at the end of the day I see a place for all of these different games. Um, the only reason that I focus on StarMade is because I promised at the beginning that I'd dedicate my channel to StarMade and a lot of people wanted to see uh, things like Space Engineers on Mushroom Fleet but I see that as a bit of a sellout. I don't have a disliking for other games. I'll play them on Channel B, um, you know, but Mushroom Fleet is dedicated to StarMade and that's a promise which I intend to keep. But that doesn't mean we can't do other things on other channels and you're going to see a lot more of that soon. Um, and with my big introduction done, <laughs> I'd like to ask Saber if he has anything to say about that. Yeah, uh, and actually, just tying right into the StarMade, or, yeah, StarMade Space Engineers debate, discussion, whatever, because uh, I know a lot of people from StarMade are like, oh, well, Space Engineers copied StarMade, and then a lot of people from Space Engineers are like, oh, you play StarMade? You should try Space Engineers. Like, I see those a lot, and, like, I'm not trying to make either one sound snooty, but the way that they present themselves each time seems to be that kind of attitude. And so I actually reach out to... Uh, some of the YouTubers, if you will, from uh, Space Engineers, some of the really popular guys. And so I'm going to try and do a video with them because, like, we need to get that, that stigma just out of the air. Like, yeah. they're both space building games, and that's pretty much where it stops. They're headed different directions. Uh, yeah, they use blocks, but that's, you know, we can we can live together. The town is big enough for the two of us, you know? Yeah, um, I've got both games. Yeah, I, I do too, and I I jump into Space Engineers every once in a while because I like to play it for it's for different reasons than I like to play StarMade. The skills and so convert, it, it don't brings, they? Yeah, it brings different things to the table for each one. Like I'd like to do some things in Space Engineers, which I can't in StarMade, and I like to do things in StarMade that I can't in Space Engineers. It's just you know there's room for both of them. Um, but as far as like voxel games in general, I think. Uh, I don't want to say they're the way of the future, but I think they're, they've are they been breaking out of the ground ever since uh, Minecraft kind of came into the scene. I mean, I, as far as I know, there were some before that, but I mean, that was really the big one that sparked it all. Um, but I've been playing Landmark a lot <laughs> lately, the past like week or so, and because it's it changes how you play games, because it's not just like, well, I'm going to go on this adventure out there, or really enjoy this story and stuff. You get to bring your own creativity into the game. And so it kind of brings out the kid in all of us, you know, like sitting around playing with Legos and, you know, you don't just make something with Lego and leave it there. You make something and then you, you have a story with it or you go on an adventure with it or, you know, you, you use your own creativity to create your own experience. So I think it really adds to the whole gaming aspect of it because it's not just stories you're being told, it's stories you're making. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Player created content, um, emerging gameplay. All of that, all of those hashtag clouds that you see. <laughs> Phantom, what do you have to say about it? Anything? I don't really think there's much left to cover. You two. <laughs> Sorry. Seems Sorry, man. Got everything. <laughs> it's, it's, Phantom's it's, like, woo, blocks. Give us an opinion yeah. if you want. Yeah. Well, everything I thought I was going to say, Saber went and did it. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's just, we're just like, I hate block yeah. games. <laughs> I can't hate block games, otherwise why would I be at StarMade? <laughs> exactly. So, but, yeah, carry on, carry on. It, um, well, obviously all games are going to have some sort of similarity if you look at it to the finest. So, what you have to do is take it as a game, not as a competitor. Not all of the developers are like, oh look, there's a game, let's try and beat it and make lots of money. Ha, ha, Except ha, mobile ha, games. Because we're evil. Well, I understand what you're saying with the similarities, because every time I'm playing any game, I'm just seeing the mushrooms everywhere. I don't know about you, I never really noticed it until recently, but suddenly it's just mushrooms everywhere. And I'm not just saying that to plug, I'm just saying, like, loads of games, they just seem to love it as an art asset. Just stick a mushroom in there, it looks like a, like a jungle, you know, or a cave, and just throw a mushroom in there. If we use a fungi... They'll think we're fun guys. Yeah. <laughs> that is terrible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Prime. And you may leave. <laughs> yes. Yeah, see you later, Phantom. So yeah. <laughs> so, um, Prime, what do you have to say about this? Um, to be honest with you, the only thing I can really say is I just hope people keep coming up with new 
Vauxhall games and that because they're all doing brilliant jobs. I mean, you know, they're, they're, they're taking cube games to a different level all the time, and it's amazing what they're doing with it. So, yeah. the only thing I can say is, you know, to all those guys out there who are developing cube, you know, crafting games, whether it be space, ground, or whatnot, you know, just keep it up, you know, because you're doing good. People are loving the games, you know, that's the only yeah. thing I can say. Oh, yeah, definitely. Here, here. Here, here. Right, well, um, that's basically everything on the list now, guys. So, I'm just going to thank everybody for tuning in and watching the uh, this podcast. Obviously, it's going to be available on SoundCloud if you're uh, watching this and you caught the end of it on uh, on Twitch. And uh, there will be more of these coming over the next couple of days, stroke weeks, stroke months. So thanks again to Saber, Phantom, and Prime. Yeah, thanks for having us. No worries. All right, it's been a pleasure. And um, be sure to follow us if you want to check out the next episodes because you'll get notifications. Uh, thanks once more, and we'll see you all next time. <laughs>